What's going on there, Jamie? Not a whole lot. Just another beautiful spring day in central Arkansas. Y'all have a, what's your weather like this week over there? Um, it's yeah. gradually warming up. We got sunshine for the first time, you know, three or four days in a row for the first time in months. Uh, yeah. it had a really rainy spring and uh, we're <laughs> mid seventies uh, today and it's ramping up into the low to mid eighties for a day or two before it gets back to normal. But yeah. We need it. We uh, we need this water to warm up, get them, get these fish up to spawning temps, and and uh, so it, it's nice to see the sunshine. We're about eleven inches over normal on our uh, rain right now, so it's it's been wet. Yeah, guys, if you don't know this man right here, but he is the uh, a bad scientist of the minnow world, in my opinion. <laughs> he knows just about everything you can imagine when it comes to. Uh, mental care and mental farming and Jamie kind of tell us who you are and what you do. All right. My name is Jamie Anderson. Um, with, uh, I'm a fourth generation bait fish farmer in central Arkansas uh, in Lone Oak. And uh, my granddad and great granddad started this industry 75 years ago, back in the late forties. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I came on after my dad and, and, uh, we, we raise primarily bait fish, golden shiners, uh, black fatheads, uh, pink toughies, goldfish, uh, black salty, which is patented and trademark fish of ours, and ship them to 46 different states, uh, live and frozen. Uh, we ship them by truck to, to wholesalers that, that distribute to bait shops, and then we also ship overnight FedEx uh, straight to any John Doe that wants one, wants a tub in his garage to use out of, or maybe has a backyard pond needs to feed his bass and crappie or has a bait shop. Uh, we ship to zoos and aquariums and uh, universities for research uh, purposes and wildlife re rehabilitation centers. Just about anybody that'll buy a minnow, we, we try to get them to them. How many uh, approximately minnows do you guys ship out a year? Well, we, uh, we hatch well over a billion head of of just golden shiners that's not to mention the other species we raise um yeah. and then how many we actually ship out we actually sell them by the pound uh so we'll sell around a million pounds a million pounds plus a year uh, the head count i don't have an exact number on that because we sell them everywhere from an inch and a quarter you right. know which equates to about 250 per pound all the way up to about six inches which equates to about 30 per pound so you know, I can I can crunch numbers and get an approximate head count, but since we sell by the pound, it's it's tough. But yeah, uh, but uh, you know, so it's uh, we don't sell a billion head. We sell far less than that. You know, Mother Nature gets part of them. Uh, you know, depredations our biggest issue. We lose more to depredation than anything. We when oh. what you're raising is on the bottom of the food chain. Um, you know, everything eats it from a snake and turtle and frog and coon and mink to every bird that has a feather uh, pelicans and comrades specifically so kind of tell us about your facility over there and you know what all how big is it it has to be pretty daggum big to have that that kind of well they're fly. they're all they're raised in earthen ponds so we've got uh, 334 earthen ponds that cover a little over 3200 acres of water uh, and we've got uh over 150 miles of levees that separate all, all those ponds. Uh, so it is certainly a large outdoor facility. Um, now we, we hatch them all in a hatchery that's uh, designed for these species and we hatch them right here on the farm and, and, uh, and then bring them in. Once they're grown out in the ponds, we bring them into our shed where we uh, separate. Each pond has usually two to three sizes in that pond that we're targeting specifically. So bring those fish out, separate them size-wise with graders uh, that we slide through our concrete vats that they're held in. And, and then from there, they'll either go into our air freight facility and be ready to be boxed and put on FedEx trucks or uh, go on to anywhere from a one ton to an 18 wheeler and uh, be trucked all over the country from there you know <clears throat> so we're talking we're we're in the heart of the crappie spawn here in the south like arkansas like you guys what's like the water temperatures for minnows to actually start spawning and stuff well they'll start kind of going through the motions in the mid 60s um you know they've built up the eggs uh, here in the late winter and so they've got eggs building in their ovaries so you know they're ready to go through the motions the moment mother nature 
uh, wants them to. So a golden shiner, you know, mid sixties, they'll kind of start going through the motions. 70, 72, they'll really start getting hot and heavy. Uh, the goldfish are a little earlier than that. Um, you know, about 60, 62, they'll, uh, they're kind of ready to, to start laying their eggs. So, yeah. so it's, uh, we're right in the heart of it right now. Our pond water yesterday morning was about 68 degrees. It's probably low to mid seventies today with the sunshine. So, so it is certainly time. And, uh, that's why we're hoping for a good, steady, uh, dry, sunny day with a, a steady temperature so we can get these mm-hmm. eggs as quick as possible. It it takes us anywhere from 30 to 45 days to get all the eggs from all the species that we have that, that we need to get through the hatchery. I know we're talking, you know, our big thing is, of course, crappie fishing here. What are the, the actual minnows names that people use to crappie fish with? Okay. Um, the just the most common primary minnow you're going to find in any bait shop around the country is going to be your golden shiner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now you get up in the Northern States, you might see some emerald shiners. Um, but, uh, the bulk of what you're going to find, especially in the Southern States is going to be the golden shiner. And they're called a golden shiner because right now while they're spawning, they do get a gold color to them, but the rest of the the year they're silver. So, you know, they do get confused with a silver shiner or, um, or an emerald, but, but uh, they are a golden shiner, and that's primarily what you're going to find. Some states that don't allow golden shiners, you'll find black fatheads or toughies um, is another name for them, and then also a, a rosy red, which is just an albino black fathead or toughy. Um, you'll see a lot of those in bait shops. Um, uh, so it just kind of depends on where you are in the country, but the, the bulk of what's sold for live bait in the country is going to be a golden shiner. You know, I got you on here today, and I'm going to ask you some different questions, and we'll have some viewers actually come on and ask some questions. I see two right now on the screen that we'll get to here shortly. Appreciate you guys joining us today. At, you know, it's a little bit of afternoon, but, hey, it's time to ask some questions and get ready to go crappie fishing all across the country. It's hot and heavy right now in the spring. But, you know, <clears throat> say if I've got a – like me, I fish a whole lot, and I'm wanting to actually get me a vat – what's some of the basic things I need to purchase to set me up a, a home minnow tank? Uh, what's the best way to actually go about that in your mind? Okay. You know, nothing major. I don't want to breed them or anything. I just want to be able to say, hey, I, I want to have four or five pounds ready for me at all times to go out there. Sure. Um, you know, we quite often we get the question and it just, I hate hearing this question, but it's how long will they live? Yeah. And uh, my my response, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, I, I just say until you kill them. Right. Um, it is not hard to keep them, but it does take um, a few certain things to keep them alive and hardy for very long. Um, let's just say that you want to order a box of minnows from us overnighted to you of a four or five pound box of golden shiners. Yeah. Well, if your first thing you need is a tank. And if you can find something in the neighborhood of about 100 gallons, I, I highly recommend just the rubber made black plastic stock tank from any farm store out there. Uh, they come in a hundred, you know, anywhere from 80 to 100 to 150 gallons. Already got a bulkhead fitting on bottom to make you a drain if you want to. But if you could get a 100 gallon rubber made stock tank, uh, stay away from galvanized. The mm-hmm. galvanized, the, the, uh, chemical in that will leach into the water and can kill the fish. Uh, so get you a plastic one. Um, biggest thing is clean water, uh, that is chlorine free. Um, you know, you can get into the pH and alkalinity and all that, but it's 99% of the places in the U S it's going to be fine. So, you know, I don't want to go into those details, but yeah, get you, uh, if you're if you got well water, great. It's chlorine free. It's probably ready to go. If you've got city water, that's fine too. So fresh city water or fresh well water, um, you can do one of two things. You can you can let that water sit for about 24 hours, and the chlorine will evaporate out of it naturally. Um, or you can buy a, a chlorine remover. Um, you know, uh, you can buy it from us. There are a lot of places that sell it, a liquid chlorine remover or a better bait or finer shiner product, which uh, has some salt in it, which is good for them. It has uh, chlorine remover. Uh, cl- the chloramines are removed. It's a pH buffer. 
Um, all those things are better. They're, they're water conditioners. Uh, mm -hmm. Put you a little bit of that in there. Um, you can get a, a 10 ounce bottle all the way up to a 10 pound bottle for relatively cheap, depending on how often you want to change your water. Um, read on the side of it, a tablespoon per 50 gallons generally is what they recommend. Put that in there before your fish go in it. Um, aeration is key, uh, but the key word is adequate aeration. Um, you know, and you can't tell by looking at it unless your fish are on top starving to death for it. Yeah. Uh, but you, a couple of styles or your normal bubble aerator, uh, which is basically just an air pump pumping through a tube into a diffuser of some kind that's sitting on bottom and the bubbles are rising to the top. Um, you know, in that scenario, your water needs to be 18 inches or deeper uh, because the longer that bubble travels through that water column, the more oxygen's absorbed into the water. Uh, the finer the bubble you can get, the better. Um, you know, that's one style. And then another style that I, I really like and really recommend, but it's not always, you know, uh, best scenario, depending on what you're trying to do is an agitator. Mm -hmm. Uh, anybody has been in a, in a bait shop in the last 50 years, probably <laughs> saw an agitator sitting on top of the water spitting. Yep. It's got a blade inside of a cage. And what that's doing is not only uh, beating oxygen into the water, it's also beating ammonia, which is the waste the fish are producing. It's beating the ammonia out. Uh, so you'll see bubbles on the side and some thick foam. And a lot of that's, that's the ammonia proteins coming out of the water. The reason I like that a little bit better than the bubbler is it will lessen your water changes. Uh, your water change uh, you have to do because of the ammonia building up. You've got to give them fresh water that's free of waste at some point. What, on the water uh, change, just speaking of that real quick, how much would you advise if you've got a, say, a 100-gallon tank just for easy thinking? Um, do you need to take out two-thirds, one-third, half, or what would be your kind of recommendation on the water change-wise? Let's just say you ordered a box, a four-pound box of minnows, and you got it in that 100 gallons of water, and let's say you're able to keep it around that 65 to 70 degrees in the shade or in your garage somewhere, um, you know, you're going to need to probably change that water a third to a half of it once a week, maybe a little more. This time of year when they're spawning and these females are full of eggs, they're putting off more ammonia than they are the rest of the year. So you might change it a little more during April and May than you would in December. Yeah. Um, you know, chain, drain down about a third of it and replace it. Um, and if it still has an odor to it and there's still a lot of foam on it, drain a day or two later, drain another third out. Um, but don't drain so much that you shock them uh, temperature wise. Um, you know, let's say your water's creeping up. It's July and it's creeping up 75, 80 degrees, even in the shade. And your uh, tap water's 62 or 65. You don't want to you don't want to take them from 80 to 65 in a matter of 10 minutes. Yeah. You, could, you could temperature shock them. So, so that's why we recommend, you know, a third to maybe half at the most. Um, mm -hmm. And once you're using out of there and you got a pound or two, you might not change any for a week if you don't want to. Right. Uh, and then, you know, some people don't have the ability to change the water, uh, may not have the availability to change it very often. And they do make products called no ammonia and Coramax that, that will, they don't get rid of the ammonia, but they mask it. They bind to it and mask it for a time that may prolong your water changes. Um, but, you know, if if you've got the water available, that's always better. That's what I recommend. Yeah. It's cheaper by a long shot. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's, you know, and we've got a chart we can send you that will show, at, let's say, 65 degrees. You might need uh, 20 gallons of water uh, or, excuse me, uh, one pound of fish per five gallons of water at 60 degrees you might can get by with two pounds of fish per five gallons of water mm. uh, but at 80 you might need 20 gallons per pound it's uh, the warmer the water is the less oxygen it will hold and the warmer the water is the more oxygen the fish are going to need their metabolism's faster yeah uh, every 10 degrees their metabolism doubles I know I've got a, another two questions that pop into my head, and I see a couple more that I'm going to ask you here in a second as well. But you mentioned earlier about those fish that come up to the, or the minnows coming up to the surface. What is that telling me if I see my minnows coming up to the top of my tank? There's two things it tells you. One is uh, they're low on oxygen, 
so they there's not enough oxygen in that water so they're naturally going to come to the top uh, the other thing it may you may have plenty of oxygen but if your water is getting really high in ammonia it's starting to burn their gills mm. uh, similar to you standing in a room full of smoke it's going you're right. eventually your your lungs are going to start burning you're going to need fresh air well if that ammonia is really high and you haven't changed your water in a long time they they act real similar to the way they do if they're low on oxygen um so you know that that's really the two things that it's going to tell you um so you definitely know, that, a water change would probably be a, a good thing to do and right. check your oxygen then right nine times out of ten you're going to have good oxygen it may just be an ammonia problem mm -hmm. um but uh, and, and you know something else to look for too is is uh if your water is for some reason just off the charts on ph or alkalinity or just something really weird that doesn't happen real often if that fish gets there and just starts freaking out and running and bumping and you know it's that's an environmental problem it's it's mm -hmm. freaking them out so you may have a you know you may need to buffer that water with some better bait or finer shine or something like that uh, just to get that ph or alkalinity back right uh, but uh, generally, you will mainly see that with some well water across the country that may just be really funky coming out of the ground. That's you know abnormal, but but uh, just it you know just watch for watch for their reaction and what you feel like it is. And there's most of those problems are really easy to fix. Oh, another thing that I know you get asked all the time as well would be, uh, what do you feed them? Do you need to feed them? How much you need to feed them? What about the feeding aspect of keeping minnows? Okay. Um, I generally recommend not feeding them for at least the first week or two. Uh, the reason being they've got some reserves built up. They're okay. You know, just like me, I promise you I can live two weeks with no feed. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, if you're going to, let's say you order a four or five pound box and it takes you a month to use it, say in the wintertime or something, after about week two, um, you know, we actually sell in small bags and even up to a five gallon tub of the feed that we raise them on that is formulated for shiners and fatheads and goldfish. Um, mm -hmm. You can buy that real cheap from us. We can mail it to you. And you, uh, what we recommend is feeding them about what they'll eat in the first five minutes. If they don't eat it in five minutes, they're not very hungry. And all they're going to do is sour the water. Um, okay. Because once that once that food's processed, it's going to come out as urine or poop, and and you're going to need more water changes more often. Um, so that's why I say don't feed them the first week, even the first two weeks. Uh, but if you're going to hold them longer than that, then I would give them a little something just to keep them healthy and keep their vitamins up, and um, like any other animal. You know, I, we've got a question here from uh, I don't think it's Mr. Tony Skeen. He's asking. Uh, What's the best way to keep them alive during the hot summer days? We get that quite <laughs> often. Both, you know, right. on the water and in the house to say. Well, let's start in the house. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're if you can't keep that tank indoors where it's relatively air conditioned, 70, 75 degrees, and it has to be outside, which I completely understand. Um change your water more often because that cool water out of the faucet or out of a well is going to help a lot. Um, if it's a case where you can't do that, freeze, um, you know, gallon water jugs full of water, free, keep them in the freezer and swap, you know, take two out and stick them in there. And tomorrow take, put those in the freezer and take another two out and stick them in there. Just try to cool the water off best you can. Yeah. And remember that every 10 degrees that water warms up, that fish is using twice the amount of oxygen. So you're going to need more volume of water if possible, or just cut back on your fish. You know, don't order 10 pounds of fish to get you by for two or three weeks. If you can order five pounds twice a week or every other week, uh, you know what I mean? Try to keep them fresh and keep, keep fewer fish in there. Now, once you take those fish out of that tank and you're headed to the lake, um, if you're going to keep them in the live well, your boat immediately, like I say, try um, try to temper those into that boat water. If you just filled it up out of the faucet at your house, try to temper them into it. If you can slowly, don't shock them. Um, and then, you know, and if it's close enough temperature wise, you might, and you want to cool it off with, you know, I don't know what the average live well in a boat is, whether it's 10, 20, 30 gallons, um, you know, stick you a, a couple of jugs of frozen water in there or a bag of ice, um, just a little at a time though. 
cool those fish down. They'll use less oxygen. Your water will hold more oxygen if it's cooler. Um, and just try to keep adequate oxygen. That, that is the key. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I keep minnows alive in a five-gallon bucket with a Mr. Bubble aerator for a long time if I don't start out with way too many in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't kill them all right at, up front. Get you two buckets, um, you know, if you have to, and split them up. And throw you a little uh, Coca-Cola bottle that's frozen water down in there and cool it off a little bit. Um, you know, it's 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 not hard. It just takes a little bit of effort. And I understand it's it's not always a perfect situation depending on where you're going, but it, it, it is doable. Well, I know, you know, in my opinion, you go out and you buy minnows, and the worst thing to do is at the end of the day have them all dead. So, you know, right. take some of these preventative steps and pay attention to what – yeah. That, them coming up to the surface is a big key in my mind. Hey, something's not right with them. They're not happy. Yeah. Well, and as you sit there and fish all day, that water in the bucket gets hot. Uh, the water in your live well gets warm. And of course, you can circulate it, hopefully. Um, you know, I see a lot of people with a, an insulated ice chest now with a yeah. bubble aerator. And that is that is the best case scenario in my point, in my, uh, you know, what I've seen. It's uh, That's what I do, if at all possible. I'm just a... You know, a ten dollar Mister Mister Bubble aerator and a five to ten gallon ice chest, uh, and throw a little frozen bottle of water in there to cool it off, and and that's as you know that's as simple and easy and cheap as it gets. Um, but just remember, throughout the day, as it's warming up, you, you need to adjust a little bit. I know, in my boat, whenever I have minnows and I'm using them on daily routine, is I have it's probably about a fifty quart. I forget the brand, I think an angle cooler, and I've got mm-hmm. an airline ran through it, I drilled a hole through it, and put an air stone at the bottom and just hooked it up to my battery. And man, you can, and usually when I get home in the afternoons, I would pour about half that water out that from that day, throw you a little bit of the, the blue stuff that you were talking about right. in my water. And man, them things would last forever as long as you kept that water changed for me. Yeah, it's uh, that it's key. It just take it does take a little bit of effort, but you know you realize what you're paying for bait these days. Yeah. You know you don't want to just throw it away, and you sure don't want to kill it on the way to the lake. So, you know, invest in a little cooler, invest in a little bubble aerator, and and uh, freeze you some water bottles, and and uh, I promise you the bait will be healthier. You'll be able to bring it back home at the end of the day, put it back in your tank, and reuse it. Uh, people do it all the time. Um, so it is possible, and I know it can be frustrating, but it is possible. And and uh, for goodness sakes, don't put them in a one-gallon styrofoam container and put a half a pound in there and, and gripe when they're dead when you get to the lake. That's yeah. Those days are past us. We can do better. <laughs> That's right. I got Daniel White. He's with Cropper Forever, and uh, he's got a particular question about fish care. He says, I have two 110-gallon tanks that we're using to release crappie tournament fish. I have an agitator in each tank, and we want to add compressed oxygen. How much oxygen flow would you recommend? That's a long question, but I'm sure you <laughs> Um, if, if it's going to be compressed oxygen, say out of like a green bottle from a welding shop, um, you're not really going to overdo it. Um, but without a flow meter, you need, you'll have to have a regulator on that bottle, obviously, uh, to run your lines off of it. That regulator is not really telling you the volume that's coming out of there. It's just telling you pressure. So, you know, we sell here at Menace Plus here at the farm, we sell a flow meter that you hook between the regulator and your air stone in line, and you can adjust the liters per minute that you're putting into that water. And you, I cannot tell you how much you need because I don't know how many pounds of crappie you're putting in that water. Um, I actually talked to Gabe about this last week uh, before one of their tournaments they were working on, and and I recommended that um, because they're wanting to obviously maximize the amount of crappie they can hold in those tanks to get them back to the water alive. And um, yeah. You just kind of have to play with it. The the really only way to know for sure how much you need to put in there is with a with an oxygen meter that tests the dissolved oxygen. Um, we've got those here on the farm. We use them every day, and it is the only way to know for sure. Um, but I highly recommend that if it's available and it's worth carting that bottle around and 
and all because that's at, that's adding oxygen directly to that water. The agitators are helping greatly, plus they're beating the ammonia out. Um, you know, use them in conjunction. Lots of people do, uh, but I would let's just say off the top of my head, if you if you can put a flow meter between the regulator and your air stone, run about two liters per minute on that flow meter and you're probably going to be just fine. You're not going to overdo it and, and you're not going to underdo it. Uh, but I, that, that's a great starting point without a dissolved oxygen meter to tell exactly what the levels are in that water. I got uh, Brad Goodart. He's from Kansas and he's asking about with the introduction of wildlife further south from uh, Department of Wildlife and such, have y'all considered growing leeches? Um, we have not. Uh, there are companies out there that do. Um, it's just a whole nother ball of wax. Uh, it's, it's the biggest reason we haven't got, we haven't gotten into it. Um, it takes a, a specialized facility, and it's just a, a just a whole lot to it that I'm, I'm not ready to jump into. But I know the market's really good for leeches. The bulk of them are still kind of harvested uh, wild, I believe. Um, but there are companies that are growing them uh, indoors in facilities. Uh, but it's uh, that is one animal I'm not. Uh, I can say that I'm not prepared to try yeah. to <laughs> try to breed and raise. Uh, I'm yeah. glad you probably don't eat them. I can tell you that. I don't know if I could deal with leeches every day. <laughs> Tim Howell, he's a he's got up north Mississippi. He's asking about. You mentioned saltening the the tank. What are you referring to when you're meaning salting them? Um, to putting salt in the water, what it does is. Um, it promotes the slime coat that uh, most fish have naturally on them. And when they're stressed or when they're um, mainly stressed and handled, uh, they will shed that slime coat. And you'll kind of feel a fish go from being slimy to being more rough textured. Mm -hmm. And that slime coat is a protection. It's, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's their immune system, but it certainly helps protect them from lots of things in the water. So uh, adding some salt to the water, Let's just go again to your 100 gallon tank. I'm adding one cup, even up to two cups of water, uh, salt wow. uh, to that tank uh, will we'll promote that slime coat coming back. Um, but be real careful that if you're doing a third or a half water change each time and then you go through and throw another cup mm -hmm. or two of salt in there, the salinity level is constantly increasing. So then you will start hurting your fish more than help them. Uh, so just be careful, but the better bait products and the finer shiner products, they have a lot of salt in them for that reason is to promote that slime coat uh, growth. Um, and basically what it is, the fish is protecting itself from the salt. So it's growing that slime coat back. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, we use it on our, our over the road hauling trucks, uh, but because those fish are, you know, they're uh, about a pound per gallon of water in those trucks and, and uh, so it helps and it, it kind of helps calm them. But, but yeah, in your, if you're going to keep them long term in a, in a tank in your garage or something, throw a, a cup full of salt in there. Just uh, Morton salt, uh, non iodized salt um, is good. Um, some of them, if you can find the one with an ant that does not have the anti clumping agent in there, which can actually turn to uh, arsenic um, over time. Uh, and kill them, uh, you know, yeah. try to find it without the anti-clumping agent. Most of them on the store shelf in Walmart in the food aisle has that, so they stay loose in the box. Um, but uh, but if you can find it without that, you know, you can buy a bag of salt from your local co-op or feed store, um, most of the time Morton's, and it will not have that anti-clumping agent in there, and it may be only be 3 or $4 for a 50-pound bag that will last you a long time. Uh, so, you know, that's what I would recommend. I've got another question. He's asking, what is the best way to keep minnows from stressing them out? I'm, I'm assuming probably both of them. You've got to go through for us how to keep your bait from stressing out on you. Yeah. Um, just like, just think of any other organism from yourself to your dog or a cat or uh, even a cow or a horse. Uh, environmental, you know, don't, don't leave them too high or too low on oxygen give them fresh water. Um, um, if they, you know, don't put too many in a small container, uh, which, you know, oxygen is going to keep you from doing that most times. But if they're, 
Um, you got too many stress, you know, and they stress out. That's uh, that's a big factor. Uh, temperature shock is a big factor. Um, you know, I, I recommend anybody, if you're a fisherman of any kind, keep get you just a cheap mercury thermometer or something and keep it in your boat. I've got one on the dash of my truck I keep all the time, plus my oxygen meter tells me the, you know, the temperature. And, and just try not to shock them more than a five-degree swing at any point in time. Um, you know, and uh, one big thing to remember in your bait tank and your holding tank at the house, if you're using a bubbler, which is pumping air down a tube to a diffuser, don't put so much into the water that you roll it similar to a bowl, like boiling spaghetti or macaroni on the stove. If that water is boiling, um, that's going to stress those fish out because they're fighting that current. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might be fine for 10 minutes on a treadmill, but an hour later, I'm stressed. Uh, and <laughs> so, so kind of consider that too. If that if it's rolling so much, they can't get out of that current because you've got too much too many bubbles going in there, uh, that will stress them also. And next thing you know, they're up at the top and starting to roll over. Kind of tell me the process. Let's say, all right, I've got me a bait tank and I'm ready to uh, buy some minnows. What's some of the options? You know, how do I do that? And kind of what do you guys offer when it comes to, you know, placing an order for minnows? How is that handled? Sure. Uh, well, you can you can do one of two things. You can call us directly. Um, if it's going to be your first order, I kind of recommend it just to make sure you got all we got all our ducks in a row and everybody's on the same page. Um, or you can go to AndersonMinnows.com and order direct from the website. Um, what you're going to want to know, uh, look at our website, look at the sizes of fish offered, uh, look at the species of fish offered. Um, each on the website, it gives an approximate head count. It'll tell you how many pounds will be in the box. Um, and then once you pick your size, the, the size, when you look at our website is going to correlate. If it's a number six, your, your basic crappie mena, golden shiner, and your average bait shop around the country is going to be what we call size six. And what that means is a thousand of them weigh six pounds. A size four, a thousand of them weigh four pounds. Now, so that's where that comes from. Well, a size six on average is going to have about 165 per pound. And like I say, that's an average. Um, and the links that are listed on the website are approximate. And I stress that because these fish are graded. Uh, they swim through a grader. So they're graded by body width. That has right. nothing to do with length. I'm 200 pounds and 6'3", but I know some 5'7", 200 pounders, and I yep. know some 6'7", 200 pounders. So, you know, fish are like us, but they're great. They swim through a grader, and they're in between certain grader sizes. So there's always going to be a window that that fish is always going to be in. He might be on this upper end today, but tomorrow that vat or that pond may be on the lower end. So you might get 180 on a size six today and it might be 155 tomorrow, but it's going to average over time 165. Um, so pick your, pick your species, pick your size, uh, give us a call or order direct from the website. Um, what you want to do when um, you'll say for a Tuesday delivery call before noon on Monday or get on the website before noon on Monday, they'll be there Tuesday whenever your normal FedEx shipment arrives. If he normally runs at noon, that's when they'll be there. If he normally runs at 4 p.m., that's when they'll be there. Um, if you want them delivered on a Friday, same thing. Before noon on Thursday, call or get on the website, and they'll be there Friday. Guaranteed to live. If there's any issues, shoot us a picture, and we're going to make them up. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's it's just as simple as that. Have a credit card, order by credit card. Um, call if you've got questions about your setup. Uh, text us or email us a picture of your setup and let us look at it. Generally, I'm looking at those. If I see something that jumps out to me is maybe going to be a big issue, I'll let you know you might want to change that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, send a short video. Um, we can sell you the the bait care products right then too. Um, you can order those over the internet or by phone if you want a small bottle of finer shiner or better bait. If you need some air stones or if you need vinyl tubing. If you need an air pump, if you need an agitator, then we can have all that to you even before your fish get there if we need to. Um, but it's, uh, you know, and, and make sure your container is the right size for the volume of fish you're wanting to order. Um, but it, it's as simple as that. Um, you know, we can, on our website, there's some size charts. 
um, just kind of see what what size fish you like to use, what you're fishing for, and, and go from what there. About, um, I got two questions, and say if I'm going to, I'm gonna just say Toledo Bend in Texas. I'm gonna go over there and spend a week, and I'm say, all right, I'm gonna order them here at my house. Can you deliver to that location where I'm gonna be at, and that way I don't sure. have to fool with them till I get there? Yes, uh, we have that request quite a bit. If you know, if you've got a hotel room at the Holiday Inn Express at Toledo, um, and you've got that address, and you know we can have we can ship them there. Um, if you've got, or you can go directly. You'll probably possibly drive right by the FedEx hub, so we can do a pickup at hub. Uh, we can tag it for that, and you can just swing by there and grab the grab them at the nearest hub. Um, if you're going somewhere that you don't think they can be delivered very easy. Um, you know, FedEx has a lot of locations now, uh, you know, storefronts that, that they can be delivered to. Um, so, yeah, we can deliver them anywhere. Uh, we just need a good physical address um, and they need to be willing to accept them. So you need to make prior arrangements wherever they're going to arrive that they know you've got a package coming in to look for it. That sounds pretty easy. It beats the heck of getting to a new lake and searching around for bait and all of a sudden they're out of them, especially in the springtime that I've seen that happen, especially on tournaments. When I would travel, we'd, we'd get to a town and all of a sudden everybody sold out of bait. <laughs> we would start well, panicking. And, and that's a big reason this air freight uh, works so well is, is not only are bait shops fewer and further between, and, you know, a wholesaler or jobber may not be able to run that route, but once a week and they're probably going to run out. Um, but you know, they're, they're closing up. Not every lake has a bait shop on it like it did 30 years ago. Um, so, you know, this air freight system allows us to give you all options, um, either get them to your house before you leave. Hopefully, you know, if you're going to leave early Friday morning, have them delivered Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you're going to leave late Friday, hopefully they'll get there, but you know, you don't ever want to bank on it. Uh, yeah. but if you've got a good location, a friend's house, you're going to pass later, or a hotel you know you're staying at, or a, uh, just whatever, if, or a, like I say, the FedEx hub, <clears throat> they'll they'll hold them for you there, and you pick them up when you come through town. What about uh, how many pounds do you need to order to actually place an order? Um, our minimum poundage is four pounds. Um, a lot of that has to do with the size fish uh, that can be put in that box. You know, the, the smaller the size, the fewer we can put in that box. And I'm trying to maximize that box so that you can get as many minnows as possible because that freight is the big killer. Um, yeah. You know, so let's say a size four or a size six shiner is going to be a four pound box. Anything above, anything bigger than that will be a five pound box. Mm -hmm. uh, the the fat heads, uh, black fat heads and pink toughies, um, they're all going to be a four pound box uh, because those fish, those smaller fish use more oxygen per pound. Uh, so I can't put as many pounds in that same volume of air and water in that box as I can a bigger fish. That bigger fish uses less oxygen per pound. If you're getting goldfish, um, it'll, you can do a five pound box or a 10 pound box. I can get 10 pounds of goldfish to survive in that same box that only four pounds of shiners will survive in. It's hmm. just a, it's a different animal. It's oxygen demands are different. Um, so, you know, I can, uh, you can get a whole lot more fish uh, for the same delivery price, um, you know, with those goldfish. And, and something I haven't mentioned is our pricing. Um, the shiners and the fat heads are going to range from about $135 for four to five pounds. Um, that's freight included. That's, that's, you know, turnkey. Um, you know, so, uh, and like I say, the freight, the FedEx is the big winner there. Uh, but that's what you get for overnight priority. Um, the goldfish, um, I believe are $135 for a five pound box, if I'm correct, but it's 145 for a 10 pound box. So for just 10 more dollars, you can get five more pounds in that box. So that's, if you've got the capacity to hold 10 pounds, that's certainly what I recommend. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, um, I know we got a, uh, you guys are offering a code right now, a discount code to anybody watching and, and want to place an order. What does that, what does that include? What can we get for that discount code? 
Absolutely. Um, everybody seeing this on, on YouTube and, and, uh, you know, checking out your website and Facebook page, uh, you'll get a discount code, which is crappie 15 and you'll get $15 off for any box uh, that we sell uh, from now through the end of April. So mm -hmm. I'd love for everybody to take advantage of that while crappie are biting or if you're going out catfishing and need trot line bait or, or whatever. But yeah, that's um, for all your listeners and, and everybody, $15 off per box uh, from now through the end of April. And that code is crappie 15. I just put it on the screen for you guys too. I got another question. Um, if I bought minnows to put in a pond to feed crappie or bass with a minnow spawn and how long can I expect them to sur survive in that pond? I guess it depends on how. <laughs> but that, that, that is a very loaded question um that is all gonna yes the minnows will spawn if you if i delivered you some tomorrow they will spawn and they're ready right now now the key is um how long will they survive to spawn uh, if you've got enough forage in that pond that these fish aren't the only thing in there to eat today then they're going to survive much longer um, and all they need to do is lay those eggs, fertilize those eggs, and they did their job. So, you know, if they can survive a few days right now, you're going to get your spawn off of them. Um, so a lot of that has to do with your level of predators, your bass and crappie or catfish, um, and your level of forage that's already in there. You know, if you've got a, a one acre pond that's full of one pound skinny bass and they're starving to death, these minnows aren't going to survive long. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. But if you've got a healthy population of fish and you've got bluegill and and minnows and crawfish and all that in there for them to eat, then these minnows are going to have plenty of time to spawn, most likely. Um, well, that brings up another really good point. I'm glad he asked that question. Um, a lot of people wait too long to order minnows to spawn. So one great thing we've got going is I will sell you that spawn direct. So while our hatchery is running, I sell Golden Shiner Fry, the same fry that I'm bringing out of that hatchery today to put in my pond to grow out for a uh, product to sell. I will sell you those same fish today through air freight, uh, 250,000 head in a box um, directly to your door. And you go place that bag full of three day old fry into your pond and release them. And you don't have to worry if those adult fish spawned or not because you just place the spawn into your pond. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's something nobody else offers. Uh, they don't have the ability to offer because they don't have a hatchery that's capable of producing enough extra. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, we I think we've got a little over 40 million uh, fry sold that are going directly to pond owners. And we have a, most of those are repeat customers. Uh, they've got a one acre pond or a 20 acre pond and they just order fry every spring from us. And then they don't have to worry if, if they that's had brood stocks or that. Yeah. So, um, so that's a great, great opportunity for a guy with a backyard pond that they, he knows he needs shiners in, uh, just order the spawn directly from us and skip all those steps and question marks. Um, Would they uh, need to put any kind of structure, any kind of habitat for that, that spawn to say to really right. maximize it? Most of most of the ponds I see and most of the ponds out there are going to have enough structure. Uh, but what we recommend is taking that bag to a um, it's best to do an upwind side. So, the you know, if it's a windy day, you don't want the waves bashing these small fry up onto the bank. So do the upwind side where it's calm. If you can pick a spot that's got some grass or moss or weeds um, down around the bank, that's great because these fry will. Uh, naturally just kind of go to the bottom. That's their survival mechanism kicking in. A lot of them are still at the stage where they've got a yolk sack and they want to attach to something anyway. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, but the ones that are already free swimming, you'll see them start to scatter out really fast. Um, you know, a 10 acre po production pond of mine, I'll put fish on one end one day and the next morning they're already on the other end. So they spread fast. Um, so yeah, just find the spot out of the wind. If it's got a little structure in that spot, great. That's even better. Uh, but it's not 100% necessary because I put them in a complete barren open pond with nothing but dirt in it. Um, and they survive just fine. Well, that sounds like a, just a fantastic thing. If you got a pond to kind of put a, oh, yeah. a booster shot into the whole ecosystem for sure. 
Well, and, and you know, a lot of people are so far out of the way that a, a guy with a truck, they can't, you know, he may charge them two or $3,000 to bring two or 300 pounds over there. Mm -hmm. um, and and that a lot of people just can't afford that or don't want to. So if you've got a pond that, that needs forage or if you've got a brand new pond that you haven't even put your bass and crappie in yet, go ahead and stock it with these fry and, and don't have to worry about getting hundreds of pounds of forage that need to spawn uh, to complete the life cycle. Go ahead and put the put that life cycle in there. I know a lot of times, you know, you get a, a lake or a pond, they'll recommend what leaving it, don't stock it for two years or so. Is that kind of the average thing or? I don't, I personally don't recommend that. But what I do like to recommend is getting, um, if you're going to put minnows and you're going to put bluegill, uh, crawfish, anything like that in there, get them in there right now, April and May while they're spawning. And then wait till fall to put your predators in. Um, on a new pond. Um, now, if you're kind of restocking an existing pond, it really doesn't matter a whole lot. But uh, you want to give that uh, forage a chance to spawn and 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 spread throughout the pond. Uh, you want to give them as much opportunity as possible so that you don't have to pay so much to put so many head in in the beginning. Now, right. let Mother Nature do that for you. Um, so uh, I do recommend certainly on a new pond stock it with all your forage in the spring and then come back in the fall and put your predators in there uh, that that's my personal recommendation uh, but if you want to wait two years wait two years here's the, mm -hmm. it's even yeah. better but nobody you know none of us are patient when it comes to catching fish so that's right. that's <laughs> we're right. ready we're ready now do you have an idea how much that spawn would cost for somebody to have that delivered to their house the uh, the two hundred and fifty thousand head in a box of three day old golden shiner fry, I think it's two hundred and ninety five dollars delivered. That's freight included. Um, so you're getting, and people always ask how much will that turn into, and hmm. I can't tell you in your pond what it's going to turn into, but I can tell you in my production ponds exactly what it turns into. Um, you know, we'll our goal is to get a thousand pounds an acre of the small shiners for crappie size customers. Um, so that this is in theory, 100% survival on 250,000 fish is of a size four minnow. Like I mentioned earlier, four pounds per thousand. That's a thousand pounds of minnows. That's 100% survival. That means they didn't get, get eaten by yeah. a bug. They didn't get eaten by a bass or crappie or brim. Um, that's, that's in a perfect scenario yeah. that we we have near perfect scenario here on our farm. Uh, so that's I can tell you I get that all day long. Uh, now, once you put them into a yeah. pond or lake with predators, certainly you're not going to have that good of survival. But it is going to be good. And you know you put them in there and you know you got them in there where if you put just the adults in there, there's never a guarantee. Um, so, so, you know, for guys that don't have other options, I promise you it is an excellent option and a very affordable option, yeah. um, to get a mass number of forage into a pond very quickly. And it has to be done in April and May while our hatchery is running. So don't, don't call in June and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing the fry because I'm going to tell you, you got to wait a year. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jamie, I definitely appreciate you jumping on this afternoon with me. I know I've learned a lot of new things today. As always, every time I talk to you about minnows and how to take care of them, I always figure out that's something I've done wrong and I've learned something new. So I definitely appreciate you jumping on today with me. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me. You know, your listeners are awesome. Uh, you know, we have lots of customers um, uh, from your base and and uh, feel free to call us or email us. I've got some amazing office office staff that um, I promise you they've heard it all in the time that they've been here, and I certainly have. If they can't answer your question, I will get on the phone with you and answer it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I promise you I, I know very well how to kill fish, and I know very well how to keep <laughs> them alive. Uh, we, yeah. We've made every mistake in the book and created some of them. So, so uh, I, we can help you one way or another if you're having issues with fish or setup or any of that we can help you and figure it out so give us a call email us and uh and what's your you number know, um our number here is 501-676-2716 that's our office number 
and uh, any of the ladies or gentlemen they're going to answer like i say they can answer 99 percent of the questions but if they can't they pass it on to me and i i, I certainly will give it my best shot but we've seen and heard it all and and uh, we've tried to fix it all but and then our uh, website andersonminnows.com is where you can go to order your fish um, our other retail company, minnowsplus.com, is where we have our, our care and handling products. So anything you need to, to have a fish in your boat or in your backyard or in your garage, we can help you with it. And that code's crappie15 for that discount code. Hey, guys, take advantage of it. Appreciate you, Jamie. Had a blast talking to you, as always, with this. And uh, look forward to doing some more with you, buddy. That sounds great. I, I appreciate your time. Keep doing what you're doing. All right, guys, till next time, Brad Chapel, got Jamie Anderson, and uh, we'll holler at you guys later. All right. Thanks, guys. Go fishing.